Okay, thank you, uh, David, and good morning, everyone. My presentation really is to remind everyone that even though we are now focused on the Data Protection Act, the reality is that we're talking about the confidentiality of information, the confidentiality of data, and, um, and this is important in terms of a governance point of view for all entities that deal with customers, or that deal with other businesses that they 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 work with. So um, let's get to the presentation. Right. So the Data Protection Act is an act which has resulted uh, in no a statutory requirement for businesses and anyone who is defined as collecting. A data which is private and defined in the act to be subject to obligations as to how to use that data and subject to the the proper protection of that data generally this 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 obligation has arisen from the CARI forum obligations uh, between the CARICOM and the EU and other international obligations. And let me just add, of course, that the presentation is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. So the presentation should not be construed um, as uh, creating a relationship um, with you as a potential client or not, and the rights are reserved um, pursuant to the Copyright Act. Okay, so when we look at the Memorandum of Objects and Reasons for the Data Protection Act, we see it, it refers to that a decision has been taken to enact legislation in order to secure the confidentiality of personal data, which may be in the possession of entities, including government authorities, and to provide for the rights of individuals in relation to their personal data in the possession of those entities. And entities, of course, refer to anyone who collects that data. So it includes individuals, it includes small businesses, sole traders, and so on. Now, some of us will remember the Grace Kennedy uh, and Paymaster case. It was a pretty pretty intense litigation that carried on for a number of years in Jamaica. And it, it surrounded, among other things, confidentiality of, of information that was provided from one business to another when there was a presumption that that information would remain confidential. The, the broader um, legal question was rights as to um, interest in software that had been created by a developer. But this other parallel issue um, was just as important. And as the matter proceeded to appeal, in fact, the, the, the claimant succeeded on the issue of breach of confidence. So the claimant was able to argue that we shared business confidential information, information as to how we were going to progress our business with, it turns out, a competitor, and that confidence was breached. And why this is important is that while we're looking at the framework of the Data Protection Act, we need to look at the broader issue, which is that once you have information that is considered confidential as an entity, as a business, you need to ensure that your governance framework is handling all of that information properly and that your processes your information technology network and other processes. Just a, a question came earlier today about how to deal with HR data, very relevant question. And that falls generally under your obligation to keep that data confidential. The Data Protection Act is, is coming on top of the broader obligation you have as to confidentiality. So it's taking a particular set of data which is personal data and indicating how you are to treat it and also indicating fines or other um, what may happen to you if there are other breaches. 
What it's also doing, however, is bringing to front of mind the fact that you have this, this obligation to protect confidentiality. So even while the Data Protection Act defines personal data and specifically deals with that, the broader question of confidentiality from a point of view of governance is just as important. And in terms of all you do to protect your data, uh, pursuant to the data protection standards and principles, a court, um, a business uh, colleague or a customer could equally say, well, you should have understood that you should also protect all of my data that I consider confidential in a similar way. So in the Paymaster and Grace Kennedy case, the court said three elements are normally required if a case of breach of confidence is to succeed. Firstly, the information itself must have the necessary quality of confidence. Secondly, the information must have been imparted in circumstances importing an obligation of confidence. Thirdly, there must be unauthorized use of that information to the detriment of the party communicating it. So when you look at the Data Protection Act, you see the data subject would be that person who would be able to say, you have used my data in an unauthorized way. Uh, secondly, the Data Protection Act defines personal data, which is any information from which a living individual or a deceased individual who is deceased for less than 30 years could be identified from. And it goes further to define sensitive personal data. And that includes genetic, biometric, racial, ethnic, uh, political opinion, religious belief, membership in a trade union, physical or mental health or condition. And this really parallels the constitutional rights we have to privacy um, by virtue of pretty much all uh, common law constitutions globally. Okay, so the data controllers who are established in Jamaica, the act will apply to. And a very important point, which everyone needs to remember, is that even if you are not established in Jamaica and operating in Jamaica, you can still be uh, subject to the law under this act. First, whether you use any equipment in Jamaica for processing personal data. Secondly, if you process data, which is defined by the DPA of data subjects in Jamaica in order to offer products or services. So any uh, internet site, um, Amazon, for example, eBay, that processes data, data in Jamaica, Thirdly, if you monitor the behavior of data subjects, if your business monitors behavior of data subjects that are in located in Jamaica. All right, and as Mr. Gray said this morning, the, the data must be processed fairly and lawfully. It must be obtained for a specified purpose. So you need to you need to set out. Uh, what the purpose is that you're going to use this data for. The data must be accurate and kept up to date, and the data must not be kept longer than is necessary and must be disposed of in accordance with the regulations. The regulations have not been published as yet, uh, but I, I suspect it, they will actually either suggest that that period should be as reasonable as possible for, for the particular use that you may have collected the data. So for example, if, if you are a health um, business, you may need to keep that data for six, for 10, for 15 years. And so the information commissioner and the office of the information commissioner would then say, well, that seems to be reasonable in terms of how long you may need to keep that information. We heard earlier that the data must be processed in accordance with data protection standards. Jamaica has adopted the GDPR standards. So there are eight um, broad standards set out that all data controllers must meet. Okay, the data must also be processed with appropriate technical and organizational measures and transfer of that data outside of Jamaica is prohibited unless adequate levels of protections are used. And you heard um, Andel refer to one of the presentations later, which will speak to trying to keep the, the processing and the existence of that data 
onshore. So that's going to be an important discussion to have. Okay, so how does the act secure the confidentiality of personal data? It it ensures that once you're processing sensitive personal data, you cannot disclose that data to a third party without the consent of the data subject. It also requires the data controller to consider the purpose for which the data is obtained when seeking any disclosure. So when your data is being collected by that data controller, they should indicate to you what is it, one, the purpose, of collecting that data, and two, they should also indicate whether there is any intention or they are requiring your permission to share that personal data. And I think now, you know, any website that you now go on, you will see the the pop up as to accepting cookies, um, and it defines different types of cookies. When you look at the different types of cookies, it's speaking to the data and what it can do with the data. So I think we're all very familiar now with the requirement globally to advise you once your information is being captured or there's an intent to use that information, what it's going to be used for and where it may be shared. Okay, and there are many fines and penalties under the act. I'm not gonna go in detail now, but I will share with you one which is particularly interesting and the court can consider for a company or other bo body corporate, it could be liable to a maximum fine of up to 4% of its annual gross worldwide turnover for the preceding, preceding year. Let me repeat that. That company could be liable to a maximum fine of up to 4% of its annual gross worldwide turnover for the preceding tax year notwithstanding any other penalties. Now, that's a, a pretty high threshold um, of, of liability. And, and so even if um, one were not to have proper governance in place and take what is being put forward seriously, it is clear with this level of a potential fine that every business has to now jump not even saunter to the to the starting line. In fact, you should have been past the starting line already. So you need to jump, you need to sprint, get up to speed. Uh, there was a question uh, open earlier about timeline. Um, as Mr. Gray said earlier, the, the act and all the, the, the fines, the standards, the obligations will take uh, effect in November of this year. So I would argue that you need to be working now, you need to have your corporate governance, your board of directors, your management teams having active meetings, addressing all of the areas now, ensuring that's properly recorded, documented, to have a full system up and running, I would argue, sometime towards the end of September 2023. You need to allow yourself some time to ensure that what you have in place will meet the standards set in the Act and will allow you to now go and register with the Office of the Information Commissioner. The other thing that is important to, to, to note that under this act, individuals are entitled to sue and they're entitled to compensation from a data controller for any damage that they say they suffer, which a court finds is correct. All right, there are some exemptions in the act. Uh, I, I won't go into those now. I think what I would do is just look at a couple of recent scenarios and then open the floor for any questions. So those of us in Jamaica would have heard last week that the Southeast Regional Health Authority announced that they had um, an, an, an ICT attack which affected some of their ICT uh, network and other services to the public. Uh, they, they did indicate that to the best of their knowledge, um, no sensitive data was breached and they apologize for the interruption and look forward to the full restoration of their services. So in that scenario, they would first have to uh, advise the information commissioner that there has been a breach. They would have to outline the steps that they would take. They would have to demonstrate the plan that they had in place to deal with such a breach. 
and the information commissioner will then assess, well, have they adequately addressed these and do we need to take further action or not? Uh, in 2020, um, we had the Jamaica National Group. Uh, we had one or two other banks which advised that there, were, there was unauthorized access to their IT systems, which either impacted their ability to operate as usual to give their customers access, or indeed that there was a data breach uh, of customers' data. And so, you know, we are not now speaking about something that may happen. These attacks have been happening. And I would argue, and I think the Information Commissioner may agree, that the standards and the, the, the governance and the protection should be put in place already once you're dealing with data uh, of customers and of other uh, business um, colleagues and associates. Okay, so business of confidentiality means that you need to implement appropriate security and organizational measures to effectively protect your company, such as the protection, the encryption of data, uh, such as, you know, checkups. So you set a, a period of time where you're doing a checkup on not only the resilience of your system, but the resilience of your processes, the resilience of your plans. So where you have a, a breach, what is the plan in place? Uh, is the corporate governance framework adequate? Uh, are you comfortable as someone who has a moral and ethical standard that you are trying to operate by, that you are ensuring that you're protecting the data of those you, you do business with? Okay, thank you. Uh